I had a great conversation today with some friends and I wanted to play this little song real quick, just a little piece of it. I thought of that song. We've been talking about love and I want to talk about that a little right now. I've, I've been sharing my testimony with people that I don't know because I've, I've been in public situations. I kind of, more than usual, I don't go into the town I live in very often, but I was in town most of the day today and I had some interesting things happen. And really the reality of my life is there's a movie being made about my husband and it doesn't make me feel special. I feel like it's just part of my life and it's gonna come and go. And hopefully the one thing that I think is the most cool thing about the movie and the lady that wrote it is she understands the story of Gene Sullivan's life is you if you hear from God in difficult situations, God gives seed to the sower. And here's a man with lethal weapons for hands. He, he was a heavyweight boxing champion and he was pressed up to the wall in a lot of different situations. And all he did was pray and hear from the Lord and everything that could have been bad didn't turn bad, it worked for good. And it's just, a, it's, it's such a simple but great message that you can hear from God. So. I was in a store today, and I've never had this happen before, but this little five-year-old boy was begging his mom for this clock, and it, it was about $15, and I mean, I felt like the voice of the Lord was telling me to, in my thoughts, buy the clock for the kid. I mean, I've never had that happen. I've heard stories of, you know, millionaires giving strangers money, but... And I wasn't sure that that was the right thing to do, but it came to me again and I couldn't, I couldn't shake it off. And again, then you, you threaten pressing through somebody's walls, maybe invading their space personally, offending them. You know, all the reasoning of my mind starts kicking in, but I just decided to obey God's voice instead. So I approached this woman and I had such a sweet time with her and her son. And I said, you know, every time you look at this clock, you can think that Jesus can put thoughts in your head. And, you know, and you can know that Jesus put a thought in my head about you to buy you this clock and he, that he loves you and that he'll put thoughts in your head to help you do things that will help people in their life, even with your mom. I mean, this lady was so blown away. I had such a deep conversation. I realized maybe it wasn't necessarily about the little boy and the clock, that it was maybe for the mom. I don't know, it was wonderful. But then I got in a car with a couple and man, did we have a powerful time talking about when the devil puts thoughts in your head and he's the killer, stealer and destroyer. And when we don't, understand that the devil will put thoughts in our heads about schisms, divisions, and evil imaginations. And you don't give your husband 1% chance that maybe you've interpreted him the wrong way. That's when pride and lying kicks in. And then all the work of the devil of divisions, schisms, all of it, you know, the things God hates that destroy relationships. You know, God stands behind love and the devil stands behind slander and accusation. So we can have the devil and imps on our side, or we can have God and love on our side. So it's, you know, we're always sowing and reaping. And what is our salvation but to know and be known by God? So if we let him know us, Jesus said, come to me, all you are who are heavy and laden, burdened down, I'll give you rest. You know, my yoke is easy. The devil's yoke is very hard. And it's hard to walk in the light of your own sparks. It's hard to lean on your own understanding. And, you know, God created us to know and to be known by him. And it's so, give me your heart, the proverb says, and your, eye, your eyes will observe my ways. So what is destruction? It's to be known by the, the dark, you know, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil.
Oh, wait, sorry. I don't want to turn the sound on either. That's going to be a problem. Sorry about that. Um, so, that's what happened to Adam and Eve. They decided to stop knowing God and they started knowing the wrong guy. And they got intimate with the wrong kind of knowledge, ate from the wrong tree. And man, it started, the, the, you know, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's the tree of, of death, really, because all we're doing is living in our head and leaning on our own understanding. And man, is knowledge abundant today. So, you know, that's why I thought of the song, to know, no, no, you is to love, love, love you. And God actually created us to give us and him to people. Like wisdom is seen in their children. Parents' wisdom should be an anointing on their children that their children carry. This is all through the Bible. And corrupt communication only comes from people tapping into the wrong father, the father who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Um, we're eternal beings. We're like a vapor, here today, gone tomorrow. And we're passing on a torch from generation to generation to generation. So today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart because we're eternal beings. And who wants to go to a place eternally with hard hearts? I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to. And I've thought a lot about that. You know, what am I actually sowing now? Do I want to be with the people that are sowing the same things I'm sowing for all eternity? These are kind of deep things that we should ask ourselves. So God, who is love, was around before creation was created. So love came first, and then creation came after that. And God's love is free. It's not forced. So wherever there's true love, there's freedom. God does not force love. It's choice. And God stands behind those who love with a sincere heart. I don't know why the sound keeps coming on this thing. Hmm. I'm going to turn it off again. Sorry. So we could either have heaven stand behind us or hell stand behind us. It kind of boils down to that. It's why selfish people have such a hard time being known by God and man. And those who walk by sight and fear who aren't walking by faith, they have walls. They have a life of self-protection. They're their own bodyguard, not the Lord, and not heaven and angels. And that's the bondage. Um, when I walked in darkness and the cunning craftiness of men and leaned on my own understanding, not trusting in the Lord, trying to learn my way out of my problems, instead of knowing Jesus, who has the answers, I lived in a hell of trying to perform to get love from God and man, striving, striving, striving. People who live that way are angry, bitter. All the Lord wants is for us to be truthful with him. That's what he's searching for. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. He's looking for people who will worship him in spirit and truth, right? So, you know, when we're in that hell of strife, trying to get what we need from the world and from people, all you can do is really be bitter and angry when it doesn't work out well. And when we have confidence towards God because we're walking in love, that's a whole different dimension. When we live for the praise of men, we'll chase the winds of a success for worldliness to do what's right in our own eyes. But the tree of the knowledge, the tree of knowledge isn't the same as knowing and being known by God. We can have the knowledge of the whole world and lose our soul because of failing to let God know us. When I started telling the truth to God and letting him talk to me in his word, my whole life changed. Um, so we really have to choose which direction we're going to point our knowledge. It's kind of like when you fall in love, you want to know that person, right? It's kind of deep. Because that's what it's like with the Lord, too. You know, that's why marriage is the manifestation of Christ in the church. Because as you work through your schisms, divisions, pride, evil imaginations, you become one. It's a great, deep mystery. So 
Um, the more I work through problems with my husband, the more deep our love becomes. I get the concept. I had to drop pride, looking down on him, looking down on people, lying, hiding, to work through the divisions, schisms, evil imaginations, to get to know him. I had to give him the 1% chance to actually talk to me about what I thought in my evil imaginations. <laughs> um, am I perceiving you the right way? It's really sad when we don't give people any kind of opportunity at all to speak to the way we're interpreting them because our interpretation could be totally off. And it's, it's a sad thing to watch that happen. People do it all the time. And if we want to keep our love strong, um, we have to guard our hearts against building a wall because love is eternal. Independence is eternal too. And where love is cold and the fire is hot, that's where independent people will be with each other. And, you know, that's something to think about too. Are you a love withholder? Are you indifferent to how you think, what you say? Because we're all planting seeds in each other's heart. And we're creating our future today, like right now. Like right now, we're sowing into our eternity as we sow into the hearts of other people. That's why I follow peace and holiness with all men so we can see God's salvation. Because the devil will give us seeds to plant in people's hearts and God will give us seeds to plant in people's hearts and we have a choice to make, right? Um, and now is actually all we have, like right now. So my prayer for anybody listening to this is to wake up to your now and choose very carefully the Father you want to glorify. Jesus promises to give us his seed to sow. If you ask me for the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, will I give you a rock? The devil will give you rocks to sow in people. Jesus will give you food to feed people. So we can know him, Jesus Christ, who is living water, him who is the bread of life. And we can love him and prove it by giving ourselves and the bread of life, Jesus Christ, away to other people. Like right now, like today, like it's your very life to know and be known by God and to let people know you and Jesus, not you and some demon, right? So, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good. Reach out and touch him. He's very near to you. That's what the word says. He's willing to love us like we are willing to love our children, right? So... I'm compelling you to go for the love. You know, he who fears is not made perfect in love. Perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear in love. So there's either fear or there's love. And when you have fear, you can ask God for love instead. Ask Jesus. Pray. Come to him. All you who are heavy and burdened and heavy laden, he'll give you rest. He'll, his burden is easy and light. The slanderer's burden, the accuser's burden is very heavy. Leaning on your own understanding, doing your own thing your own way. The bed of sorrow is not an easy life. A life of independence from God is a hard life. And I just pray that this has blessed you somehow today because you can hear his voice and signs, wonders, and miracles follow those who believe because the just shall live by their faith, not by sight. And people that are afraid live by their sight and not by faith. So you know what? Jesus is willing to help you with your fears. And there's all kinds of great scriptures that'll help you too. Amen.